Each time a new Smash game rolls around, it kickstarts speculation across the gaming world over who its incoming class of newcomers might be. Which big names or new faces might join the roster next? Which games might be represented through stages or items? What ideas might the devs tap into that we've never seen before? But things don't always work out in everyone's favor. Every time, there are always a lot of characters who miss their chance to get in. It's happened for many different reasons. Sometimes Sakurai and the team are prioritizing other characters, leading someone notable to slip through the cracks. Sometimes two or more hopefuls are in direct competition with each other, and bearing rare exceptions, only one is able to make it. Sometimes the devs wanted to include someone, but couldn't figure out a concept for them that felt good enough. Or sometimes they simply ran out of time. And it always leaves fans wondering what could have been, how these forgotten fighters could have looked and played had things gone just a little different. This is Challenger Approaching, where we take a character who isn't playable in Smash yet and go deep into detail on what they could be like if they got in for real. Our Challenger this time is an important figure from a generation-defining game who might well have missed his chance to get an invite. But what could he have been capable of had the timeline gone just a little differently? Or what might still come to pass if, somehow, he's able to overcome the odds? Ravali. Ravali is, or was, champion of the Rito people of Western Hyrule in the time before Calamity Ganon's awakening. Boasting unmatched skill with a bow and arrow even by Rito standards, he could strike targets and enemies with pinpoint precision from hundreds of feet away while in constant flight, and even hit multiple at once without breaking a sweat. But it was his power to control the very wind itself that stood him above his peers, up to and including a signature technique that let him create an updraft on the spot to reach towering heights in an instant. His talents were unmatched among the Rito, and he'd have been the first to tell you. A compulsive braggart with a superiority complex, Rivali's arrogance was often only tolerated because he was good enough to back up the talk, and even then, there were limits. He showed particular disdain toward Link. In his mind, why should the greatest of the Rito have to take orders from some no-name Hylian knight who was only given the title of champion because the Master Sword happened to choose him? Though the few people close to him caught occasional glimpses of his true self beyond the bravado, of a perfectionist who judged his own shortcomings even more harshly than he judged those around him. He, Link, Zelda, and three others were tasked with saving Hyrule in its time of need, but things did not go according to plan at least in the main timeline. Thanks to the monumental success of Breath of the Wild, all of its main characters, including the four champions, have become fan favorites. Rivali himself has gained a significant fan base in the six years since, his hidden depths and mastery of the wind proving to be much more than just a fantasy version of Falco Lombardi. Combined with the reimagined designs the Rito got in Breath of the Wild, and we have a character who got a lot of attention, of various kinds. While Smash support for Zelda newcomers hasn't rallied around any one single character for a long time, there have been more and more fans clamoring for the series to get someone new. We've seen a share of new stages, items, assist trophies, and etc., but we haven't had a non-derivative Zelda newcomer since Melee. And among the many Zelda characters that saw support during Ultimate's run were the champions. Even saw some people suggest all four could work together as a tag team fighter. And yet, none of this came to pass. Link got a Breath of the Wild-themed touch-up, but the series went without a newcomer yet again. Which puts Rivali in an unfortunate position. His game's time in the spotlight is fading fast. The sequel to Breath of the Wild, whenever it's ready, will likely introduce a new set of major characters for Link and Zelda to join forces with. We don't even know when the next Smash game will happen. There'll definitely be a Smash 6 eventually, but for all we know, it could be a long time from now, and there could be several new Zelda titles at that point. By then, Rivali would have long lost his relevance. Still, maybe there's a chance for something unexpected to happen. Maybe we'll get an updated version of Ultimate in the near future that would have room for Rivali. Maybe he'll still play a role in the Breath of the Wild sequel somehow, through being brought back to life or some other way. And there is still room on the roster for a character who takes archery far beyond anything we've seen from the handful of neutral specials that have used it so far. The future is never fully predictable. Well, that was surprisingly somber. Let's lighten the mood. What would Rivali be like in Smash? For his default appearance, we're pretty set already. Since he's a relatively recent character, Rivali's design from Breath of the Wild and the spin-off Age of Calamity could fit right in with few modifications necessary, sporting his light blue champion scarf and wielding his trademark Great Eagle bow. 
Some alts could drop the scarf and use the getup he wore before becoming a champion. Both are pretty cool looking, so why not? Rivali may have an ego the size of the Tabantha Frontier, but based on what we've seen, he got this good thanks to rigorous training. His movements and animations should reflect this, with each attack, dodge, and flap of his wings giving the impression that he knows exactly what he's doing. Could sneak in a little smug flourish or two, but only during the follow-through of certain attacks or other spots that don't affect his precision or aim. Rivali's alternate colors have a logical source of inspiration. The Rito and Breath of the Wild have many different feather colors. The devs could take their pick. Could definitely see one based on Cass in particular, since he's a recurring NPC of some importance. But there's a different character who could work as more than just a palette. Teba, Rivali's successor from 100 years later. His abilities are so close to Rivali's that he could work as a full-on alternate skin or an entire set of them. It takes some finagling since he's canonically taller than Rivali, but Smash has taken creative liberties like that with alts before. Just look at Ike. Teba could also work as a full-on Echo Fighter for Rivali if the devs had the ability and spare time to do so. Now for Rivali's stats and other attributes, starting with his fighting style. His archetype should be dead obvious, but how do we handle it in a way that feels unique? That said, I think we got this. Of course he's a projectile-based zoner. When your weapon of choice is a bow and you lean harder on it than anyone we have so far, it just makes sense. But zoners can take a few different forms, so how Rivali establishes his zone of control is what matters most. He actually won't do the stereotypical throw out a ton of projectiles with reckless abandon thing, putting emphasis instead on precise snipes and stage control. He can threaten from nearly anywhere on stage, or even above it, and has tools to lock down sections of the playing field and force opponents to go elsewhere. But since he can't throw out constant waves of projectiles, he has to make his pressure count. But he does have a fallback. Rivali's not as vulnerable when opponents get in on him as zoners typically are. With competent melee attacks, he can hold his own against rushdown and brawler types in general pretty well. However, his mid-range options are either flawed or high commitment, so we'd have to avoid fighting at that range like the plague. Rivali's exact stats are more complicated than the raw numbers come off. Starting with his size rating, the Rito and Breath of the Wild are very tall, and Rivali is no exception. Being a pretty big target makes him more susceptible to stray hits in neutral situations and prone to getting stuck in a disadvantaged state. Not helping is a weight value firmly in the lightweight class, liable to lose stocks earlier than most fighters too. Maintaining poise and control is of utmost importance for Rivali, because when he loses that control, things can go south quickly. Rivali's movement stats are unusual. His walk speed is pretty good, and his initial dash is fairly unique, having him kick off the ground for a burst of movement before his actual run. Not only is it notably fast, it'd also be one of the longest dashes in the game, letting him keep that increased speed for longer than nearly anyone and giving him legit burst movement, even if he can't put his shield up until it's done. He'll want to rely on that burst movement, because his actual run speed is mediocre. Rivali prefers the air, though, and it's no wonder with airspeed just outside the top third of the roster. Combined with good air acceleration, up to three mid-air jumps, four jumps total, and stellar recovery, and he has much more presence in his natural element. Rivali's attacks, we can split into two types. His close-range moves have above-average speed and combo potential, but their damage is lacking, and only a select few can net knockouts. Meanwhile, his projectile attacks are more powerful, but they're slower to come out and they hardly combo at all. It evens out into average to slightly below marks in damage, frame data, combos, and kill power. That's okay, though. His true strengths lie elsewhere. Now for Rivali's moveset. Let's turn him loose and see what a Rito warrior is capable of. Beginning with his most basic attacks. Starting simple is what I would say, but while Rivali's jab combo starts with a quick chop using one wing and a horizontal sweep at the other, he complicates it by using the motion from the latter to perform a quick pivot, brandish the Great Eagle bow, and fire a cluster of three arrows at point blank. Startup's decent by zoner standards, and while the first two hits deal little damage, the finisher's strong enough to actually kill at the ledge at higher percents. Rivali's forward tilt has him swing his bow forward in an upward arc. One of his only decent footsies tools, its range is pretty good and disjointed since he's not attacking with his body. But it's on the slow side, liable to get out frame dated by faster disjoints, especially swords. For his up tilt, Rivali hops in place and swings one wing in an arc overhead. A quick and useful anti-air with surprisingly good coverage, as long as it doesn't trade, its knockback is low enough to combo out of a low percents, but in that awkward spot at high percents where it can't kill or confirm into one. 
A good warrior knows when to improvise. Rivali's down tilt has him grab a spare arrow and stab with it at ground level. It ain't pretty, and it's got a lot of end lag for a tilt, but it compensates with power. Strong diagonal knockback makes it an emergency kill move from 140% onward. Finishing the set, Rivali's dash attack has him flap his wings while running, abruptly launching him forward into a flying tackle. Subpar startup belies a move that covers a lot of distance surprisingly fast and can even cross up shields. It may not kill until late and may leave him a sitting duck if it doesn't cross up, but it's still a legit burst option or landing trap. Rivali's smash attacks are where he really starts to show off, including an unusual forward smash that has him plant his feet, prep an arrow, and fire a long-range shot straight ahead. A rare projectile smash attack, and with longer range than any other, you can even angle it to adjust the aim up or down by 20 degrees. A key part of his ability to snipe from a distance, this strong but narrow attack is a substantial threat, but it's very telegraphed with over 20 frames of startup. The arrow gets weaker the further it flies, and since it's a projectile, it can get reflected back. Rivali's up smash is more typical. He leaps upward with a rapid spin, creating a miniature tornado that deals multiple hits. Reaching close to the height of a full jump, this move has impressive vertical reach for calling out air options or pressuring platforms. But the hitboxes are on the thin side, and this move has a ton of end lag ripe for punishing if it misses. For his down smash, Rivali backflips in place, knocks a powerful bomb arrow, and fires it straight below him for an immediate explosion. This evasive maneuver works best when you predict an opponent will commit to a down tilt or other low attack you can go over, with generous hitbox size and power to make your call out count. But not only is it slow in general, Rivali has no actual protection to speak of, so anything he doesn't evade will still hit him out of it. Enough grounded stuff. Let's put Rivali in his natural element. His neutral air has him perform a full horizontal spin with his wings outstretched, swirling the surrounding air around with him. This move deals two hits, one at the start as the spin begins, and one at the end as the wind disperses. It's a space clearer, similar to Mars and Lucina's neutral airs, covering him from the sides but leaving him vulnerable from below. Rivali's forward air is different. He knocks three arrows at once and fires them in a spread formation. One of his main zoning tools while airborne, the arrows come out straight ahead and at roughly 30 degrees up and down, and deal above average damage but don't kill except off stage at high percents. Their distance is limited for balance purposes, only about a dash length before they drop off, and their hitboxes are narrow and weaken as they travel. Rivali's back air is more conventional, a quick, powerful kick directly behind him. Wait, why does that sound familiar? With enough speed to disrupt nearby enemies and enough power to be a go-to finisher, it's a key part of Rivali's kit only held back by its lackluster range. His up air is another classic, a mid-air backflip kick. It's got a weird arc due to Rivali's avian build, reaching higher than usual but with less range to the sides. Like other moves of this type, it's a juggling tool that doubles as a combo move when landed with, and its vertical reach is offset by more end lag than average. Lastly, Rivali's down air has him build up wind energy, then dive straight down. Not only does anyone in the way take a strong hit, when Rivali hits the ground or a platform, he creates a circular blast of wind. Like other stall and fall moves, it's a mix-up for psyching out enemy juggle attempts that is punishable as hell if it doesn't hit. He isn't much for grappling, but Rivali's grab game has some stuff going for it. Not his grabs themselves, though. Reaching out with one of his wings has solid range, but the animations are unwieldy with slower startup and more end lag than usual. He has to be smart about them. If he does grab someone, his pummel has him backhand his opponent with his other wing. Rivali's throws are pretty interesting. His forward throw has him quickly clap his wings together, creating a tiny sonic boom that blasts the opponent away. His back throw has him turn around and fling the opponent behind him, which sounds typical, but the gust of wind he backs it up with gives it enough extra force to be a moderately strong kill throw. His up throw is a grounded flip kick that knocks the opponent away, and his down throw has him kick off the opponent, ready an arrow mid-jump while they're stunned, and fire a point-blank shot right at their head. This deals notably high damage for a throw, but deceptively poor knockback growth stops it from netting knockouts unless you're on a high platform. You might have noticed none of these have any follow-ups. Rivali doesn't have a combo throw. All he gets from a grab is damage, positioning, and a situational kill move. Finally, a few taunts. Can't neglect them with this guy. Some options include one where he beckons anyone nearby to fight while saying, you really think you can keep up? One where he performs a quick spin of his bow while saying, watch and learn. And one where he simply laughs mockingly before clearing his throat and getting back to business. Yes, they're all infuriating as hell, but they are in character. 
And now, we've reached Rivali's special attacks. What does this champion have for his signature moves? We've caught glimpses of his archery skills so far, but let's take it even further. Rivali's neutral special combines it with his wind powers for something even more impressive. While not directly based on any one single move, it's a natural extension of his cannon abilities. Press B, and Rivali stops in place, hovering if in midair, and preps his bow. Press any cardinal or diagonal direction at this point to have him aim accordingly. Then he quickly draws an arrow, infuses it with wind, and pauses for a brief moment before opening fire with a straight shot. But if during that pause you press another direction adjacent to the one he's aiming in, the wind enshrouding the arrow alters its flight path on release, curving it at an angle based on what you pressed. With eight directions to aim in and three variants per direction, this move has a total of 24 possible trajectories. Wind Arrow is Rivali's primary zoning tool, letting him snipe targets from many different positions and angles. The fast shot speed, narrow hitbox, and optional curvature let him contest other zoners by aiming his shots around their projectiles. However, the prep time and lengthy end lag means he cannot overwhelm opponents with rapid shots, and its frame data is slightly worse in the air for balance purposes. This move works best when you think like a master archer. Know when to shoot, where to aim, and when to adjust your shot at the last moment to lead your targets. One special down, but Rivali can't always rely on his bow to get things done. That's why his side special has him get rougher than usual. While the Rito aren't known for carrying large objects with their talons, Rivali does do it for a certain move in Age of Calamity, and that's canon enough to work with. On use, Rivali stops for a moment, then lunges a dash and a half length forward feet first. If he latches onto an opponent, even if their shield is up, a unique grab animation kicks in as his talons grasp on and he pulls them into the air with a surprisingly graceful rising backflip. The grab diverges from here based on whether his opponent was grounded or airborne when caught. If they were standing on terra firma, he lobs them forward during the flip, readies his bow as he exits it, and fires an arrow that sends them away. But if they were already in the air, he holds onto them a little longer and lobs them behind him instead, turning around as he preps his bow and firing an arrow into their back that sends him in the other direction. Rito Talons is a command grab designed to catch opponents panicking in their shields, dealing extra damage and putting them high in the air where they're much more vulnerable than Rivali is. Since his archery is already going to make opponents shield a lot, this is especially good at punishing their default response. That said, the knockback from the shots at the end are moderate at best. It doesn't kill, it just gives you the advantage. Also, the reason the mid-air version sends people backward is so this move isn't broken at edge guarding, and it's still risky to use while you're recovering because it has a ton of end lag when used in the air. Alright, I don't need to tease it, do I? We all know what Rivali's up special has to be, right? Yeah, there we go. Where else would we put his in-universe signature move? Once activated, Rivali ducks low and spreads his wings, then unleashes an updraft of wind that propels him skyward and damages anyone nearby. But there's more. Once he reaches the updraft's apex, at a bit above Battlefield's top platform if done on the ground, he enters a gliding state not unlike Steve's up special, able to fly through the air a long way if left to his own devices. It's a little different stat-wise from Steve's, with faster lateral movement and less steep of angles necessary to build momentum. Rivali's Gale starts with a burst of vertical movement that clears the surrounding space, then transitions into a long-distance recovery, albeit with drawbacks. The only damage it deals is one hit at the start as the updraft appears, and a weak hitbox on Rivali as he's gliding, which only helps so much since he's still a big target. And while he can bail out of the glide at any point, doing so puts him into freefall. The decently quick startup of the updraft gives it some use as an out-of-shield punish, but it's super committal since Rivali always goes into the glide afterward. Now, what do we do for the down special? Well, sometimes it pays to think ahead. And sometimes... You can use arrows for indirect pressure, too. Bomb arrows are a powerful but risky type of ammo in Breath of the Wild, and since Rivali uses them for several moves in Age of Calamity, I figure he's enough of an expert to get crafty with them. On use, Rivali pulls out a bomb arrow, takes aim, and fires straight up, sending the arrow high above the stage. It might seem like nothing at first, but after three seconds elapse, a target reticle appears, ominously marking a spot at stage height. Two more seconds later, the bomb arrow comes crashing down with a powerful explosion. You can direct the shot left or right from your starting position by pressing that direction during the startup, and the arrow goes through platforms and other passable stage surfaces, only detonating once it hits a solid surface or wall. 
Bomb Arrow Barrage is an unusual stage control tool, designed to fire it off and use the threat of the ensuing explosion to keep opponents away from a certain part of the stage. Though Rivali also has to am scray. He can get hurt by the blast, too. Just like in Breath of the Wild, bomb arrows are a potent yet dangerous tool that takes an expert hand to use well without causing collateral damage. You can also only have one active at a time, for obvious reasons, and while you can use them offstage, once they've fallen far enough past the height you shot them at, they just defuse and fall apart harmlessly. And now we have Rivali's final smash. What could possibly work as his finishing- oh come on, you know what has to go here. Yep, there we go. For his ultimate attack, Rivali calls upon the divine beast he was selected to operate. Channeling the power of the Smash Ball, Rivali envelops himself in a sphere of raging winds in an attempt to snare anyone in range. Any opponent who does get hit is blown away into a cinematic that drops them onto a frozen mountaintop, and the camera quickly pans to the sky to show the divine beast Vameto armed and in flight. The ancient superweapon gathers a massive amount of energy, and with a shout from Rivali, already on board and off screen, Va Meadow unleashes a gigantic laser that obliterates the mountaintop. The enemies stuck there might survive at first, but they're taking so much damage and get sent so far once play resumes that it won't matter for long. This is what Rivali could be like in Smash. An ace archer and aviator putting his mastery of the bow and control of the very air itself to bear for a deadly display of dexterity and skill. His inflated ego might grate at the nerves sometimes, or often, but seeing him in action is all it takes to realize that beyond the bravado lies a true champion. Rivali's key strength is a set of hard-hitting zoning tools that pressure from range and are uniquely effective against other zoners, letting him fight members of his own archetype as easily as he walls out grapplers and bruisers. Unlike most zoners, he's competent at melee range, able to hold his own in close combat and put up a fight against Rushdown. And with a long-term stage control tool in his back pocket, well, quiver, he can lock down entire areas and force campy opponents out of their comfort zones. However, Rivali is both very tall and very light, a rough combination that means he can afford fewer mistakes than most other fighters. His scarcity of good mid-range tools means opponents with strong spacing or footsies options, especially swords, give him fits in neutral. And since most of his biggest threats are projectiles, opponents who can reflect, catch, or otherwise block them can throw a wrench in his game plan. Ironically, he'd probably have a losing matchup against Link. Ooh, this was different. A character with unique tools and a significant fan base that wasn't treated as a serious Smash contender at the time because roster speculation was focused elsewhere. Full disclosure, the reason I picked Rivali first out of the champions is entirely because I had the most ideas for his moveset. I do want to get to the other three over time, so keep an eye out for that. Even so, getting this concept feeling right was easier said than done. Had to balance making it feel true to Rivali's character while also keeping it, well, balanced. I limited actual flight to his up special for that reason. I know Brawl let -like characters with wings glide at will, but that was broken as hell in practice and it's best left in the past. I also wanted to focus on his unique talents first and foremost, which is why I only used bomb arrows twice and opted out of any other arrow types. I didn't want the concept to feel too gimmicky or reliant on references. Hard to say how things will go from here. For fans of Rivali, Zelda fans still hoping for a newcomer, and fans of archery in competitive games. Who knows, maybe the Breath of the Wild sequel might introduce a new Rito character who could carry the torch and be available for Smash 6. Either way, sometimes it's fun to look back and wonder what could have been. Special thanks for this video to these people here. Thanks as well to my patrons for your continued support. And now, it's their turn to vote on which of these three hopefuls gets the challenger treatment next. Who's it going to be? So, until next time, may the skies be clear and the wind be at your back.